before this video starts, I just want to say I accidentally pressed the wrong settings on my microphone, so you will be hearing my camera audio instead. What's up everyone? Uh, welcome to another science video. I know I haven't done this one since the first one I released. It's kind of hard to pick a topic that I really want to talk about because it's something that I want to be able to research into it so I can be more informative about it. Um, wearing my shirt today it says, dude, you're freaking me out with the little kitty cat. Can we make an argument today? Uh, first by starting off with this Come here. It's just one treat, right? Just one treat. Come here. I need the camera to see you. Come here. Come here. You can see, right? Okay, so she's eating the one treat, took her treat away. So it was one whole treat, right? It was one of these, one entire milk bone. Your cat or dog may be able to tell if you're gonna be late for dinner which means that they're going to have a late dinner. I had this idea the other day asking whether or not animals have the concept of time or if they're just creatures of habits. I mean, obviously, all animals are creatures of habits, including humans, but it was more or less, do they understand counting? Do they understand numbers? Or do they just understand the concept of the difference? And hey, get out of there, stop. I don't want you to treat so bad, stop. And yesterday in my philosophy class, we were actually talking about that, and one of my classmates mentioned that she doesn't believe that animals can count. But every day when I get home from work, I have two milk bones in my pocket, because I work at a dog kennel, so I always keep treats in my pocket, so when I get home, I bring two for my dog. And, you know, after she comes and greets me, then she knows, she anticipates the treats. So I give her one treat, she eats it, and then she waits patiently for the other one. And I never thought about it, but she always knows when there's two treats. So the days that I don't bring treats so that I've forgotten, or I only have one treat, then she just waits and sits. And, like, it's like, well, I only have that one treat, I don't have any more treats. But she knows to anticipate that there's more than one. So she might not know what the number two is. She might not even know what one is, but she knows that two is more than one. You know, she understands the concept of quality or quantity, you know? And so I want to talk about an article I got off of lifescience.com. It was written by Joseph Castro, and this was published in 2018. In the early 1900s, there was a horse named Clever Hans, and he was able to show the ability to solve math problems. Like, they would, you know, show him stuff, and then he would count with his hooves. Um, I'm sure you've seen that with uh, dogs. You can do it too, but horses do it usually more. Okay, now comes the intellectual part of the thing. So, Maggie counts with this foot. Basically, I just, the first time I said, Maggie, how many is this, honey? If you notice here, you can see that Maggie looks down to look at a clue from her owner to know the number. That's it. Good. Sit down. Good. And then, and then I, I realized I, could, I didn't even have to use fingers. I could just ask her. So I said, like, Maggie, what's two times three? Perfect. That's perfect. Get a little treat for that. Good. And then um, maybe one of you would have rubbed I'd love to. Maggie? Magpie. Snow, hun. Magpie. What's eight minus two? Listen, honey. Before. Eight minus two. Yes. Wow. Good girl. Good. Oh, uh, they can answer yes or no questions, like two for yes, one for no. Um, but at least in Clever's instance, it was fake but it did show that the horse had really impressive observational skills because he, uh, he was able to read his owner's facial expressions and like very minute body cues and so like maybe like a little nose twitch would mean like three or something and that's how it figured out and then uh, apparently monkeys, bears, wolves and other animals can also demonstrate the ability to discriminate between two qualities so like I was saying with my dog she might not know what number two is but she understands that one is more than two, you know? And that kind of thing. So now watch this. She knows that this is one treat, right? But if I break it up, watch. She sees me break it up into two treats, right? So I'm gonna hide this one here. She didn't see that. 
So I'm just gonna give her one. See, she knows that there's the other half there because she sees it. Now watch when I give her the second half. See, now she's relaxed, because there's no more treats left. You go kick in. Oh, I dropped one. The next article I'm going to be talking about is a study from the Northwestern University that was published to Nature Neuroscience in 2017. And uh, the medial entorhinal cortex, which is located in the temporal lobe, which is right here, it is the area of the brain that's associated with memory, navigation, and also the perception of time. So it's what understands uh, spatial uh, aspects and episodic memories. And episodic memories are basically like your personal experience, your knowledge of things, um, that kind of stuff. And it's just like, I have the usual routine usually, right? I have the same routine for the most part throughout the week. Um, every morning I wake up at 3.30, I go to the gym at 4, I get back from the gym at 5.30, and then my cat is meowing at the door if he's already ready to eat and all that whatnot, right? Um, and then, you know, after I feed my cat, I go shower, then I come down, then my dog comes up, and then she already knows that it's time to go to potty, so she'll wait outside, or she'll wait by the door ready to go, you know, ready to go potty. Um, then same thing at, um, there's times where I'll just be sitting down, just playing video games or something, and it's like, uh, 1.30, right? And my cat comes down, like, down the steps, and then he just starts, he waits. And I look at him, and I look at my clock, and I'm like, oh, it's 1.30, and it's like, it's time for food, and, like, he knows, like, you can't, and, like, the animals anticipate the time, like, they understand the time, but my question there is, do they understand how long it's been, or do they just understand the habit of it being around this time? Because me waking up early in the morning, um, if it's a Saturday, sometimes by habit, even on my day off, I wake up at 3.30 just out of nowhere without an alarm. Just subconsciously, I wake up right at 3.30 or right at 3.25. Um, and last year when I was on vacation, I was in South America. And this was when I wasn't waking up so early to the gym. So I was just waking up like at 5.30 or like 5.00. And I was waking up like around five o'clock every morning on vacation, and I didn't have to get out of bed till like nine, like nine a.m. But it was just a habit of, even like on a Friday night, I like hate to admit it sometimes, but like if I'm not out, like partying and dancing and stuff, if I'm just home chilling or hanging out with friends, when it comes around 10 p.m. on a Friday, I'm really exhausted and I'm ready for bed because I'm so used to having to go to sleep pretty early and then have to go to work at 7 a.m. the next morning. And it's just, in general, as creatures, we have that practice of habit, you know. So, my cat always knows when it's time to eat. And, um, just, you know, pets always know when you're going to be home. They have this understanding of repetition. That's just a little short little essay thing I wanted to do on that topic. I think it's very interesting. I agree that animals might not be able to have the ability to count, but they can definitely understand the difference in quantities, which is the start of it, because in philosophy we're getting a whole topic of 
would math even exist without humans being around? And like that's kind of a huge step towards figuring that out with animals having all that stuff. Humans created time, so you know we created calendars and stuff, so we were able to kind of not dominate time, but we were able to identify the concept of time, which helps us understand the passage of time. Since animals didn't have to develop that, they don't really need the concept of time, they just need to know, you know, when they're tired, they sleep, when they're hungry, they eat. But humans, we focus so much on waking up at certain times, we have alarms to wake us up, we, you know, we eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, like we know, we have a general idea of what time we're going to eat, stuff like that, you know, like my lunch break is always at 12.30 every day, you know, like eat breakfast in the morning, I eat dinner at night, like there's always habit and time really come together when we're talking about the human species and I don't see why habit and time can't come together when we're talking animals you know maybe they have they have to have the concept of time and they definitely form habits but do they understand how they intertwine is what I am proposing I will do more research on that topic on a side note Sekiro came out last week and Yoshi's Crafted World comes out this week. I'll be picking up both of them on Friday. Definitely doing some gameplay on Sekiro. I'm not sure if I'll do any on Woolly World. Um, but then Cuphead's coming out soon too. Grabbing that on Switch. That's just for my gaming part of the channel. As far as science talk, I do have... I had another topic in mind that I didn't... I can't think about it right now, but I wrote it down. And I'll probably make that video soon as well. But yeah... Any questions, comments, let me know. I'm more than glad to address them in another video. I hope you enjoyed this topic as much as I loved researching it. It's really cool. I might do more research on my own, do a part two. I'm still looking to do another part two of the AI awareness if it is applicable, if I find more research on that. But I also had a lot of fun making that video. But yeah, thanks for watching as always, and I will see you on the next video. See you later.